Hello and welcome to The Print. I am Sumi Sukanya Datta and we have with us today Dr. Anurag Agarwal, Medical Researcher and Dean of the Trivedi School of Biosciences at Ashoka University. Dr. Agarwal was also previously the Director of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology. He'll talk about the ongoing Zika virus outbreak in some parts of the country and whether there is a need to be concerned. Welcome to The Print, sir. Please Thank you so tell much. Please tell us what Zika virus disease is and why it is a threat to public health. So many of us, you know, would can think of the Zika virus as a cousin of a family of viruses, for example, including the dengue virus. Right. These are all viruses that are transmitted by mosquito bites. And we have known about the Zika virus for over, I would say, almost 70, 80 years now. Mm -hmm. So it's not a new virus, but until maybe 30 years ago, we were not certain that the bite of the mosquito transmitting it to humans lead to further spread and form clusters. Right. Now in the Zika virus, the difficulty is that it presents acutely, kind of like dengue. You have mm -hmm. the standard fever, things like this. Right. It very rarely kills anybody during the primary infection. It can happen, but that's not common at all. But it can stay then in the body for a long time and be transmitted further. Mm -hmm. And that's where the problem rises. So in mothers who are pregnant, who get a Zika virus infection, mm -hmm. they can pass it down to their children. And these children can then be born with a variety of problems, most frequent of which is a very small head called microencephaly. Okay. So once they noted in a major outbreak that the kids were being born with small heads, they were able to put things together. And since then, WHO has called a Zika virus outbreak as something of public health importance. And okay. even other than microcephaly, these children born to mothers with Zika virus infections can have other neurological problems, including epilepsy. Even during the acute infections in humans, there can be neurological sequelae. And something very interesting about this virus is it can even be transmitted from uh, between husband and wife, for example. It mm -hmm. stays there. So, so yeah, so this is a virus that is so it can be transmitted sexually, are you saying that? It can, it can, it can. I mean, so so in male semen, it is present. So if, okay. if a person is infected, they can theoretically transmit it. And similarly, it can transmit vertically in a woman okay. uh, to the child. So it is kind of like other diseases of that type, viral diseases. Mm -hmm. Except that, you know, because the symptoms are standard, fever, joint pains, aches, a little bit of rash sometimes, it goes away. So okay. people don't think much about it. And that's why public health surveillance is so important in Zika. Yeah. So there are some concerns in India, particularly. We are seeing that the Zika virus is currently getting tested only at national, some select national laboratories. And they're not widely available commercial tests that can be used by you know, everyone who suspected case. Do you think you know this lack of testing and also surveillance at the genomic level is a concern? So I think. You know, every time these things occur, now India has the capacity right. to quickly build new tests. So I think that way we're in a good place. It's not just an India problem. All over the world, the Zika test, nobody has really invested in it. Okay. Because these things don't occur frequently. There is no standard day-to-day -day commercial demand. Mm -hmm. And this is where World Health Agencies, governments have to step in and make it a scalable test. Um, mm -hmm. Because the basic point is... If you take a step back, what you have is a disease that is difficult to distinguish clinically. The yeah. results of which what we fear, the children being born with defects, occurs months later. Right. It can be transmitted silently. And therefore, the only way to know what is happening is for people to be tested for it. Right. And because the symptoms resemble other viral infections, Mm -hmm. Only way people will test for it if it's a test is easy. So I completely agree that there is a tremendous need, but there's not true for just India, it's true world over, that we now recognize that Zika is not going to go away. We cannot wish it away. And I think India can lead the world in providing affordable diagnostics the way we did in SARS-CoV-2. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the country, like the rest of the world, saw a very bad phase during the COVID pandemic. Do you think our response to fresh challenges like Zika has improved 
uh, we have learned some message from the pandemic and uh, we are uh, you know implementing it i think it's very early to say look at how fast the notifications came mm -hmm. so i think the response is right so far the minute you have a case an advisory went from the center to the state now the only challenge is that health is actually for practical purposes a state subject right so beyond sending advisories is not much the central government can do mm -hmm. in terms of getting it done on the ground and which is why the real issue to my mind is that yes the central government has sent the advisory that's very nice uh, but now we need to create the ecosystem where the state governments will get access to cheap affordable tests right now some states are going to be capable of doing it in fact mm -hmm. if you notice there is a thing Whenever a new infection comes, you fund first find it in Maharashtra, you find it in Kerala. Yeah, that's that's become a trend. Is that because of the better surveillance they have? Probably. So. I would imagine so. These are richer states. Yeah. These are richer states with better public health systems, uh, better diagnosis of cases, better uptake. So you find disease there. Yeah. So you know you cannot find something until you look for it. Right. And so the better your system is, the more disease you will find, and the longer you will live. So sometimes always but politically it also become disadvantageous because then they are blamed that you have this oh you have this disease and other states well, yes you know the general public sometimes thinks like that and that is something that we should try to correct that misconception uh, many states of india may look disease free simply because they test very little some states might truly be disease free mm -hmm. one should not ever look at disease absence or presence in absence of looking at how much testing was done Absolutely. So, but like I said, you know, the test in Zika is not easily available. Mm -hmm. So it's a terrible thing, you know, very crowded cities, lots of mosquitoes, although it has a very specific Aedes type mosquito vector. It's different from the malaria anopheles. But the fact is, if we are transmitting dengue, we can also transmit Zika. Zika, yeah. And it will transmit silently and we won't get to know really if it's spread widely. Until the babies start getting born, we don't want to wait until then. Yeah. So yes, testing is essential and genomic surveillance can also give you an idea. Let's say there were very few cases and we were picking up all of them. Mm -hmm. Then genomic sequencing of those cases would be very closely related. Yeah. On the other hand, if we were not picking up the cases and they were spreading widely, mm -hmm. then there would be divergence between the various samples you will pick up. That's kind of how in India, we knew during SARS-CoV-2 that there was a lot of undetected spread. I mean, antibodies is the other way. Uh, simply by looking at the genome sequences, we could make out that so much diversity could only be coming if there was lots of spread. Yeah. So in absence of white testing, which will certainly take time, we can't wish these things into existence. Uh, something as simple as genome surveillance in India is very good now. Under the InsaCorp group, there are some outstanding labs, including my previous lab. Yes. And they are very, very capable of doing all of this. Yeah. So I'll also take this opportunity to ask you about bird flu, because that has also been a very major public health, health problem all over the world. So some scientists have, in fact, said that it could lead to a pandemic even bigger than COVID. Do you agree with that point of view? What do you? What is your assessment of the bird flu situation? So the thing with pandemics and viruses, particularly respiratory viruses, right? it's only a matter of when it happens. It's never a matter of whether it will happen. In fact, even if you go back to 2015, there were papers talking about a coronavirus epidemic that might come in future, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So one could actually go back and say science told us that there would be a potential coronavirus pandemic. Right. And after SARS-CoV-1, everybody got prepared. America made action plans, filled its things. Mm -hmm. The thing with humans is we are optimistic people. We don't like to think of bad things. Yeah. And therefore, after some time, we forget. But from a pragmatic view, it is only a question of when, not whether. And this is where governments come in. And mm -hmm. governments stay pragmatic while citizens remain happy. And this is where you maintain surveillance. It could be bird flu. It could be swine flu. It could be some other flu. The thing with the flu virus it is fantastic at recombining. Yeah. And any respiratory virus that transmits efficiently like the flu does can always yeah. transmit. So it's yeah. only a question that we get something that our previous immunity will not yeah. protect us against. It's more and more difficult for viruses that have been circulating amongst us for a long time. It is less difficult for brand new viruses. 
but just like you know after millennia thousands of years of flu being with humans we had the spanish flu in 1918 it was not from spain by the way uh, there is almost certainly a threat by flu but we are good with flu surveillance i would actually say that we are better with flu than most other things because of dedicated platforms and technologies okay so uh, a lot has been said about how you know the, how health and climate are now interlinked closely that's why we are seeing these viruses jumping from animals to humans a lot has been talked about one health also in the indian context do you think enough is being done to you know maintain that relationship that synergy and also surveillance so i don't think anywhere in the world enough is happening but let me put something more specific for india Mm-hmm. one of the key problems in india was that we had no one place in which right. everybody was a stakeholder that everybody would agree to work together under that one common thing that problem is now solved to my best of my understanding and the icmr institute mm-hmm. that is being opened not only is it a stakeholder of the ministry of health it has multiple other stakeholders so right. i'll give you an example you want to go look at wildlife Mm-hmm. wildlife does not fall under the ministries of health if you want to go to environment that's a different ministry in right. fact even if you wanted to go start looking at dogs it actually would come under ministry of animal husbandry or something like that for economic yeah, yeah. reasons so for the first time under the efforts of the pmo now the structure is created where there is one institute that is co-owned in a sense of the word owned by multiple ministries mm-hmm. but you know to create an institute is not a small task you have right. to recruit you have to you know there's lands buildings could it go faster yeah i mean i would be delighted if it went faster but there are realities of the pace at which institutions are built mm-hmm. and we aren't speaking of something coming in 6 months we are speaking of things coming over time right so even paper cooperation by which the ministries have come together Mm-hmm. can be helpful even before the buildings come up and before the buildings are occupied by human scientists so i think the spirit is there and i mean i must be a disclaimer i am on the part of the board of icmr and we discuss it extensively in terms of how to do this better this time okay okay with that i wrap up this conversation thank you so much sir for joining us and sharing your views with us thank My you so pleasure. much thank you